the big myth, farm fish are safer than wild fish. Mm. I want you to get a very clear picture of what a farm fish looks like. Because so I visited one when I was up in the state of Maine about two years ago. Now, anyone that would think a farm fish is healthier than a wild fish, because we can control it, you're off. They are giant circular cesspools where you have actually hundreds and hundreds of times more fish in a constrained area than you would have in the, uh, in the wild. They are so weakened because through their gills they are taking the feces of the other fish and bringing it through and trying to get oxygen out of that and wherever there's large amounts of feces the oxygen goes down so now they like you, if you're not breathing well, breathe even deeper and get more fecal matter in. They have to pour into you almost unanimously fish farms antibiotics now. This romantic idea you have of the Eskimos that go out in their canoes and by hand collect salmons is untrue because over 50% of all salmon comes from China's cesspool fish farms and they are so sick and so anemic that a major common practice now is that they paint the salmon pink or red. Because they just like anemic people are white as can be. Now, am I telling you anything that's not confirmed or true? No. But you would like to believe Eskimos caught that from the North Sea or somewhere wonderful or off the coast of Alaska where the top oceanographic scientists from Sweden showed us recently the largest and most primitive all areas of the of the planet's waterway are highly contaminated. They tested for 2,684 chemicals and stopped because there wasn't one chemical they tested for that the whales didn't have in them. Nearly 3,000 chemicals, they said, let's for look for this, they found it. Let's look for this, they found it. Let's look, almost 3,000 chemicals they gave up because they realized there is not a chemical that man makes that we know how to test that's not in these incredibly pristine waters wildlife at this point. A lot of people still choose to believe that eating farm-raised fish is much healthier than consuming fish caught in the wild, especially those lifted from our sore-dumped oceans. Now, how many of you realize that? Here in the New York area, when you walk along the shore, you can actually find syringes. How many of you ever did that when you walked along the beach here? Of course. You know, find used condoms, find Tampax, the plastic Tampax thing, because forever, before most of you were born here, they were actually taking barges out and dumping them into the ocean. Like, oh, it's going to disappear. It's going to evaporate. What do you think happens to that stuff? You know, we are nuts. We are insane. Their reasoning goes like this. Because aquaculture, also known as aqua farming, involves raising fish under controlled conditions, regulating both the fish environment and fade quality. There is less chance that farmed fish will be contaminated with alarming range of toxins being measured in wild fish. This belief constitutes one of the biggest prevailing myths about aquatic life and human health. Now, how many of you, let's be honest, would have liked to believe that? Even if you didn't quite believe it, raise your hand. How many of you would have liked to believe it? Of course. If I were eating fish, I would say, well, gee, of course, it's under better conditions. What does that say? Is this, wild, is this salmon wild? You bet it's wild. And if you had to spend your entire life in a cramped pen surrounded by dead sea lions and sea lice while eating nothing but processed fish pellets, you'd be pretty wild too. <laughs> oh, that was a great one. Salmon is one of the fastest growing of aquatic farm fish and is being genetically modified for every faster growth and higher profits for aquatic farm. By the way, your FDA, let's give them a hand, they are just bastards. About three weeks ago, approved Frankenstein fish. Did you know that? Let's give them a hand. Come on now. They deserve, because they are such great con people. You know, they didn't do it at first. They let everyone go to sleep. They waited for the holidays, so you got out all whooping up and you were eating, you know, pound cake and stuff like that, and then they snuck it right through. That's how they do this. Cramped fish farm conditions. There's what a fish farm looks like. Sad. Now, another scary thing that we have to consider 
is when these genetically modified Frankenstein fish are in the fish farm, you think any ever sneak out into the ocean. Well, the one I observed when I was in a boat in the bay in Maine, which is a common place they have fish farms, was in the ocean. And guess what? Fish, even the sick ones, know how to jump. And you'd jump out of that pen if you were one of those fish too. And they go and have, they mate with other fish. Yeah. And guess what happens? We now have brand new species of fish that never existed before that, by the way, cannot sustain life. And as they intermate and have more of those fish, more mutations happen, and we have another reason that we're going to wipe out the oceans on this planet, and they're going to be eventually, it looks, by the end of the century, a major cesspool. But we won't have to worry about it by then, I can assure you. Overcrowding typically occurs in fish farm pens. With that comes a rapid proliferation and spread of viruses. Anyone care to guess why the water in fish farms is dark brown? Supermarkets in Paris, London, Oslo, Frankfurt, and Edinburgh sold fish containing contaminated levels so high that no consumer would safely eat more than eight ounces in a month without suffering severe health consequences. Now think of what I'm saying to you here. Why is it that you're listening to Brian Clement tell you this on a Saturday in Long Island? Wouldn't you think this would be more relevant as the lead story on the, the national media stations? Do you think CNN should be airing this? No. Of course they won't. Because if you look at who subsidizes, now we have four media outlets that control the media of the world now. Four media outlets that control the media. And if you watch some of these, they don't even hide that they're biased at this point. The one that starts with an F, I can't even watch at this point. That's the, they make it up as they go along. I mean, I just never saw anything like it. And by the way, we're going to, because that's so fashionable, the ones that make it up because people are so weak and confused, and the only thing they have left that they have control over is anger. That's how they get you. They have three times more people watching that F station than any other station. So now all the other stations are trying to mimic the F station. I won't say it, and I hope none of you watch it, because if so, you're lost souls. Lost souls. They make it up as they go along. The toxicity level should have triggered a health advisory based on U.S. Environmental Protection Agency standards. In North America, salmon perches in Boston, San Francisco, and Toronto also contain levels of contaminants exceeding so-called safety recommendations. How dare a government organization say there's a safe level of any noxious poison? How dare you say that? Who that's protecting, again, is not the citizens of a nation or the humans on the planet. It's protecting who? How many of you know that every single country, major academic and uh, economic country in the world, now sponsors fishing? Just like we pay for farming and pay farmers not to grow food, and we keep prices down, we do the same with fish. And so you didn't even know it. How many of you knew your tax dollars partially go to subsidize the fish industry? So you had three or four people in the room of a couple hundred people in here. Pretty weird, isn't it? Look at these. These are the kind of contaminants you see. 